Three kings in four days. Never in modern history has any nation such a quick change of order than in Nepal. Following the massacre of King Birendra and other members of the royal family, the landlocked nation's experiment with democracy under a monarchy is probably passing through a difficult phase. Since the reintroduction of the democratic system in 1990, eight elected governments in Nepal fell. With such instability, some fear of a takeover by the royals or the Maoists. The Maoists have also set up parallel administration in most of the districts there. Analysts feel this instability is great concern for India. I think it's of great uh, crucial significance, not even great. I mean, I think Nepal's stability is of crucial significance to India. Uh, not only because it is a neighbor, but I think because uh, we have a border with Nepal, which is strategically significant, and Nepal is a factor whenever we discuss Sino-Indian relations. And in recent past, there has been great concern about the ISI activities in Nepal. So if you take the strategic dimension, Nepal is of crucial significance. There is no example, no instance of any other two countries in the world which have an open border. You don't need any visa, passport restrictions and all the things to move from one side to another. So naturally in situation like this, when the bonds are so intimate and so close, anything happening in Nepal, any, any pointer or any development which could possibly cause instability is, is naturally a matter of concern to us and is, uh, is vital for us. Considering the stability of Nepal is vital for India due to open borders between the two nations and the presence of a very large number of Nepali nationals in professions, services and trade, New Delhi was wise enough to follow a non-intrusive line on Nepal. Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee confined his public observation on the situation there to an assurance of cooperation to the government in Kathmandu. Analysts suggest that a low profile and minimum comment was in the best interest of India. Uh, I think what has made me very happy is that the Indian reaction has been fairly restrained. Indians have resisted the temptation of advising Nepal what to do. And I think they have uh, not been unnecessarily curious about whether what has happened in Nepal, who done it and things of that kind. I think it, these questions are for the Nepalese to ask. And what kind of political system Nepalese want to live with, a monarchy, a democracy, is for Nepalese to decide. And I think the Indians have been for once at least fairly sensitive to Nepalese sensitivities and they have not expressed an opinion about what the future should hold for Nepal or what Nepalese should do to secure a particular kind of future, I think is a fairly mature uh, response. The key point in India's reaction is the caution, or I'm talking of the official reaction, the caution or the restraint and the care that had been taken sc to scrupulously avoid the impression that impression of interference in Nepal's internal affairs. And that is very important. Nepal is one of the world's poorest nations with its per capita income hovering around dollar two hundred in the last few years. Analysts feel adding to its woes, corruption, inefficiency and lawlessness have become the hallmark of all successive governments. Experts believe with a rapid change in the socio-political scenario, a change in relationship between India and Nepal is likely. No change if the present trend, the present trends continue. I mean, still there is quite a lot of uncertainty. One doesn't know what what is happening or what may happen. So quite a few imponderables. So it is very difficult to be specific. But if the situation, the present situation continues, I do I, I don't see any reason for a change in India's uh, attitude towards Nepal. What we are interested is the st stability in Nepal and the stability of their institutions. I think what ties India and Nepal together is geography, is history, is culture, is mindset. And I think uh, Nepal and India have ties, economic ties, which are mutually beneficial. Uh, there has been assistance uh, extended from India to Nepal and also Nepalese have been of great use to India. I mean, they have they have served this country during the freedom struggle. They have been shedding their blood for the defense of India and the Indian Army. And I think these ties are age old and I think however unfortunate the recent happenings, the Nepalese and Indians will stay close to one another. Many feel that King Birendra had practiced Nepal's foreign policy in a way that gathered the support of 118 countries to his proposal of declaring Nepal as zone of peace.
King Birendra also played an important role in South Asia as he was the founder member of South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation. In the absence of this unifying leader, India must conceive an approach that discards past symbols of hegemony and modernize bilateral relations to suit new realities.